Hey guys, it's Elizabeth with Forest and Fay. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, I am a full-time eBay and Etsy reseller, and I take you guys to estate sales, garage sales, yard sales, thrift stores, online estate sales, anywhere where I can buy items for low and sell them in my stores online for a profit. And as I said, I do this full-time. That was a recent transition. I transitioned to full-time reselling in 2023, and I had been doing it as a side hustle for around two and a half years, and then had to make the leap when the small business that I was working for closed suddenly, and I had to make the decision, should I get another job, or should I just try and scale this side hustle into something that's a full-time endeavor? And already, in less than a year, it's already kind of transformed my entire life. So if you're looking to make that leap and you need some encouragement, I'm here to say that if I can do it, anyone can do it. Today we're headed to an estate sale that's nearby and thankfully it's nearby because it's raining outside, which the positive thing about rain is that it can keep people away. People who, you know, maybe aren't as a serious thrifters as we are so that's the perk of rain but you know you never want to be out in the rain so we're trying to keep a positive attitude today we're headed to grab some coffee at Panera and my husband's at home with the kids it's a Saturday morning this is the second day of the sale so everything is 50% off and they look like they have some pretty good stuff a lot of vintage stuff which is my most favorite to pick because I'm a, it's the thing I'm most interested in, but B, it's also the thing I have the most knowledge about. So come along with me. Let's go try to pick this estate sale and see what good stuff we can find. All right, it's raining. It's pretty crowded. And I don't have an umbrella, but let's go in and see what we can find. All right, we are in the door. Let's see what we can find here. Yes. Looks like everything is half price today, so. That's good. CCM hockey. That's kind of cool. I like that. Cookbooks, obviously my favorite. So what we got. Baking bread together too. What year is this? Nineteen eighty-eight. Books, but I'm sure they can't be that expensive. Oops. I don't want that to fall. Hmm. Blue ribbon recipes. Good housekeepings. Show you how to slow cooker. Country living. Southern living. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to put these back, but... Did, are you, and you sit there doing them this morning. Why are you yeah. doing them this morning, Paul? Right. Try these. Put this guy back. <laughs> Bridge match mat. That's interesting. Oh, <clears throat> gives you like instructions on how to play bridge. I don't know. I might pick that up. Sylvania's cooking. Uh -huh. and, the, and the council don't want us. Let's pass the law where we can't find where they spent the money. Let's see what they've got on these dish towels for. They don't match it. They make a lot so they can push us. And they can get themselves with a Republican. Square and done. 25. Dish towels, two dollars. Ten dollars. That would be two fifty. That would be twenty. That's really nice tablecloth, but Some books. You guys know how I feel about books. What's what? America's Lighthouse. Living on the Earth. Oh, Barbara Walters. And I don't typically like copper that's not stamped in some way. That, but if you know better, let me know because, like I've mentioned, I don't know all things. Or 
yellow. It's actually white underneath yeah. that. <laughs> Looks like Spode, but it's Mikasa. This little guy is cute. Chair. It'd be fun to curl up and read a book in that. Would be 150. Yeah, I would like that a lot. Thornberry. made in China. Chaps. Boutique. Rugs are five dollars each. Johnston and Murphy. Thirty-five would make it seventeen fifty. Reba Rose, I like the material on that. Hmm. I know you can sell, especially new in box. Um, Pantyhose. I've just never done it. I've never picked them up. Okay. Vintage canasta set. Doesn't look like the box is in very good shape though. Do we have in here? Lamp. Rainbow Row, Charleston, South Carolina. Those are nice frames, but even 25 I feel like is too much for those. Linens. company always have to give a head okay so I wasn't I did come over here for a second sale and I wasn't able to film the estate company wouldn't let me film inside but it was full of stuff and I was able to get a lot of good stuff including some vintage Levi's and so anyway I'm gonna head home try to clean up some of this stuff 
and then do a haul from the house to show you guys what I was actually able to get at this sale. Okay, so as promised, I have brought in the items that I picked up from the estate sale. The second estate sale did not allow me to film, but I was able to get some really good stuff. So I wanted to show you what I was able to pick up and also show you what I grabbed during the first estate sale. So first up, I have some vintage hunting prints that I'm gonna grab. These were not priced when I got to the second estate sale. It's a set of two. This one's upside down. And they both have horse and hound fox hunting scenes on them. That kind of decoupage aged yellow look. And the wood is in really good vintage condition. So all in all, with everything that I got at the second estate sale, they gave me a, a deal for $30. So for the items that I purchased, I ended up paying $2 a piece for everything, which includes these. So I have sold items like this in my store, not at this exact print. It doesn't have any signatures, but I'm thinking for the set, I can probably get about 50, definitely 50 on Etsy, maybe 40 to 50 on eBay. Then the next item is, which I thought was really cool, is this etched wooden scene. And it says Rothenburg and then the letters ODT. Let me see if I can make that clear for you guys. It's dusty, so I'm gonna have to use like my little blower slash vacuum cleaner to clean all of the dust out. Um, but I thought it was really unusual, very unique. I loved it. I'm not 100% sure what I could get out of this. I'll have to do some research on it, but I'm thinking probably between the 25 to $35 mark. This was also an item that I picked up at the second estate sale. It is like a latch lid croc vintage and I've sold the smaller crocs before I generally can sell them for between 20 and 25 this one has a marking on the bottom that's very faint that I can't quite make out but I imagine that I'll probably be able to get about 30 to 35 for this one um, in really great condition and like you can see you unlatch it the lid comes off and you can use this for like butter any reason you would be using Crocs, you can use this for, but it's easier to store. So, um, yeah, I think I can probably get about 35 for this one, just because the size is so unusual. The next item that I picked up is this kind of primitive looking shelf. You guys can see and it's got the hinges and it actually may hang like this because it looks like the hinges or the the mountings on the back would make it like this on your shelf so as you can see it's kind of hand carved on the bottom a little bit crude kind of that primitive vibe and I have sold shelving like this um, it's particularly popular on Etsy but I could probably get about 45 for this and like I said I paid two dollars for everything um, at the estate sale that I was at at the second estate sale so next up I've got a grouping of cookbooks these I picked up at the first estate sale some of them were on camera and actually this first one here that I'm going to show you was at the second estate sale this one is the Betty Furness Westinghouse cookbook and it is from the 1950s and it is a first edition um, I want to say 1954 it is a first printing first edition and I'll have to run comps on that but I'll show you guys what I find on that and put that up here what I'm gonna be able to get for this but that one was two 
And then I picked up several other that just little kitschy. This one is from the American Legion Auxiliary from Minnesota. Um, this one is from Houston, Texas, local church there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. This one, Baking Bread Together, also just a local cookbook. Each of those I could probably get between six and 12 for. This is a good housekeeping vintage cookbook. Name brands like that, Good, good Housekeeping, Betty Crocker, those kind of cookbooks do better because obviously they're more sought after, more searched for. Um, this one was just unique because of its content, ethnic edibles, and it is from New York. So I just thought that was a really cool cultural, culturally relevant vintage cookbook. This one I picked up for the name. Obviously we all recognize James Beard and this is his hors d'oeuvres and canapes. Am I saying that correctly? Um, so just for his name and the fact that it's vintage, let's see if it has 1963, originally came out in 1940. So yeah, I grabbed that one too. All of the paperback cookbooks that I grabbed at the first estate sale all rang up for 50 cents. I had to grab this one off camera. So this is the Good Housekeeping Cookbook. It's not in great condition. You can kind of see there's some wear on the spine, discoloring, but it's well loved. Um, <laughs> for Burt Rogers from Mama. I love that. And this is, doesn't have a year, but like I said, Good Housekeeping, Betty Crocker, those kind of cookbooks, I tend to do better with those because they're easier to find if it doesn't have a specific place or location in the cookbook itself. Okay, next up, I did was able to grab some vintage clothing. That second sale had some interesting vintage clothing, including vintage North Face, vintage Patagonia. I didn't, I wasn't able to grab any of those because there was quite a few people in the closet with me, but I did pick up this sweater and it is a vintage brand. If you're not familiar, Lido, it's like a ski, vintage ski brand. And as you can see the blend here. Now it does have some spotting on the front, so it does have a good stain. Um, but for the price that I paid for it, I'm gonna try my best to see if I can spot clean it. But if I can't, I still feel like I could probably flip it for about 25. But in great condition, these can go up, depending on the design, these can sell for up to about $100 on eBay. And then, this one brand is Woods and Gray, but I picked it up simply for the design. And it is a extra large, it's a cotton Ramy blend, made in Hong Kong, so obviously vintage, but just kind of that Cosby-esque 1980s loud crew neck chunky sweater vibe. Um, so keywords, if the Woods and Gray I still have to look that brand specifically up, but if it doesn't show up, then I can definitely sell this with some pretty good keywords. I did pick up three pair of vintage Levi's, men's Levi's. Now I, want, I will say vintage loosely because none of them are made in the USA and those are the ones that go for a lot of money. This one was made in Colombia, so it's not, it may not be you know, more than 20 years old, but well-worn. The reason I picked this one up is because it has a blank tag on the back. So there are a few sold, and also because it has the button-up fly, which in my experience sells best. So it is a vintage, I keep saying vintage. It is a Levi's 501. Um, the size is pretty good, but with the button fly and the blank red tag on the back, I think I could probably flip these for about 30. 
maybe. I picked up two other pairs, same size, different range. I think one of them is a 550 um, and different location. One of them's made in Mexico, but well worn and all button fly, button up fly. So I can probably get between 15 and 20 for those other two pairs. But again, I paid $2 for them. So I thought that was a really good deal. And next to last, I picked up two vintage hunting vests. Um, let me see if I can get these up here for you guys to see. And so as you can see, it has like the shot, the shell holders here. I don't know if these are shooter considered shooter vests. They're definitely duck hunting vests. This name is Duck Bay. And I want to say this says made in Hong Kong. I tried to comp these when I was there and I will say I can probably get about 30 for them um, depending on the, the popularity of the size. This is the second one that I picked up and it is not a brand that you can easily comp because it's local to Tennessee. Um, it is Wilson Dunn's made in Grand Junction, Tennessee. See if you can see that tag. And then it has like the zip pocket on the back, but again, super vintage. Um, <laughs> it looks like it was even maybe mended in some way, but I just thought it was really cool. I liked the patches on the shoulder and I'm sure there's someone out there that went duck hunting with their grandfather when they were eight and they want you know, a similar vest to what he was wearing or something like that. So I think that there's definitely going to be interest in those. And I can probably get a little bit more for that last vest that I just showed you. And last but not least, I picked this up on camera, I think. And this is a tablecloth, a bridge tablecloth. You lay it on the table and it has your game directions on it and rules um, and your scoring and I just thought that was really neat interesting something kitschy enough that is not really manufactured anymore that you've got a bridge club that's gonna want to put that on their game table so I thought that was really cool and I think I paid two dollars for that maybe and I'm not a hundred percent sure what I'm gonna be able to get for it but I'll try to leave comps up here so that you guys can see so I think that's pretty much it. It was a really successful day. I was bummed that I couldn't film at that second estate sale because there was so much stuff. But as you know, filming while you're trying to pick and holding the camera, thinking about what you guys can see versus what I'm looking at and trying to keep your faculties about you can be a little bit challenging. So I was, I probably did a little bit better because I was able to dig without having to worry about filming. But I hope you like this haul. I might do things like this similarly in the future, especially if there's at a location that's overcrowded or I can't film at. I can at least show you guys what I picked up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys again for joining me today and I will see you again next time.